this oil paint. Generally, it's had a pretty good reputation. The most legendary stereotypes about oil painting can be traced to the Renaissance. There's some truth to them. Many times when people hear of oil painting, they think of candlelit rooms and the artist feverishly working away as an alchemist would. Leonardo da Vinci, of course, comes to mind as he was the perfect bridge between science and art. But if we really want to look into the history of oil paint, we aren't going to start our story in Europe. We need to go further east, to the Silk Road trading route, in a time when Buddhists inhabited Afghanistan. In 2001, the Taliban was in control of Afghanistan, and their strict interpretation of Islamic law forbade the worshipping of idols. They actually banned all imagery, whether it was religious or not. And of course the Buddhist statues were also seen as idols of another religion. So they blew them up. Teams of archaeologists came to survey the damage, and in doing so they discovered the first oil paintings known to man. In antiquity, the Bamiyan Valley was smack in the center of the historic trade route, the Silk Road. These Buddhist statues, located in the Bamiyan Valley, also held caves full of Buddhist monks. While the monks lived there, they also decorated the inside of their caves with gorgeous oil paintings on the walls. Not much is known about these works, and many have been damaged by looters, religious nut bars, and war. But if there's any grad students out there with a pension for a little adventure, then here's your thesis. The oldest oil paintings in the world are smack in the center of Afghanistan. No one is writing about them, so go there and find out some information for the rest of us. Thanks. So what is oil paint? Okay, so here's how you've got to think about oil paint. First, you've got rocks. Here's a big chunk of lapis lazuli. This stuff was all over Afghanistan. Crush it up, add some walnut or poppy seed oil, and you've got oil paint. That's basically it. A few hundred years pass, and another option becomes available after chemists figure out how to make colors through chemical combinations. Move a couple neutrons here, a couple neutrons there, and lapis lazuli becomes ultramarine. Of course, today, the pigments used in many paints are synthetic, and almost all of the major brands also adds tons of filler to their paints. If you pay good money, you can get some high-quality paint made from real pigments, but you still will have to look pretty hard. Anyway, so now we know a little bit about paint. Let's get to the big changes in how we think about oil painting, and that is the technique. Oil painting had been around Europe during the Middle Ages, it just wasn't really used that much. Fresco and egg tempera were in wide use, and the accepted artistic medium. Then in the 1430s, a Flemish painter by the name of Jan van Eyck came along and was like, um, guys, you're using all of this stuff wrong. Van Eyck pioneered much of what we still think about oil paint. He exploited the translucent value of the paint and created glazes. This allowed for more realistic modeling, and as a result, he is considered the father of oil painting. We'll have another video soon solely about Van Eyck. For the next hundred years, if you are an oil painter, you would buy pigments, buy some oil, and maybe some drying medium. You'd get your apprentice to mix up some colors, maybe stuff them into a pig bladder or something, but that was pretty much it as far as oil paint was concerned. Then. In 1841, the biggest revolution ever to hit oil painting came. Are you ready? Believe it or not, the tube of oil paint is relatively young. By having the paint in a tube, this gave the artist a lot more versatility. Not only could he easily take his paints with him and paint on sight, which is also exactly what the Impressionists did, but the tubes also had caps. This meant the paint wouldn't dry out as fast. More than anything else, this changed the way we think about oil paint. Before it was a laborious process getting ready to paint. Now you just unscrew a cap, 
squeeze out some paint, and you're ready to go. There are many techniques, oils, mediums, and varnishes involved in oil painting, but for the most part, this is the story of the paint itself. And before you think you're all technologically advanced, now that we're in the 21st century and you're streaming data through the air, remember that whenever you paint, you're essentially holding a stick with some animal hair secured at the end and smearing around crushed up rocks and oil on a piece of wood or cotton fiber. Thanks. Ciao.